Would you say that North Korea is behind this? Well, Emily, right now through the uh, process of elimination, uh, North Korea really is the only uh, suspect here. Uh, and looking at the uh, previous track record, North Korea has conducted uh, cyber attacks on North Korean, on South Korean government, military, banks, uh, other uh, institutions in South Korea. So there is a track record here. And specifically, the timing is very suspicious. Uh, the UN Security Council resolution passed another uh, set of sanctions that target North Korean diplomats. North Korea responded uh, with a very strong threat that they would retaliate against South Korea. And so this cyber attack fits in terms of the timing and that threat. You know, I was initially surprised that a country like North Korea would really have the capabilities of carrying out an attack this sophisticated on such a massive scale. Do they really have these capabilities? North Korea does, and uh, North Korea has invested a lot in terms of scarce resources into these types of capabilities. And this really gets into the area of cyber, which is relatively a new field, uh, and the true asymmetrical nature of this domain. So South Korea being the world's uh, most wired country and North Korea perhaps being the world's least wired in, uh, in this respect, uh, you see this opportunity for North Korea to attack this vulnerability in South Korea, but South Korea not really being able to do that because North Korea doesn't have this type of infrastructure. So why target banks and media outlets rather than, you know, military centers or, or government agencies? The South Korean population has lived with the North Korean threat for decades. And so when it comes to conventional attacks, although from the Western perspective they may seem quite dire and, and uh, quite uh, immediate, uh, there is a certain immunity to these type of threats when it comes to conventional attacks. But with these type of cyber attacks, when you're going after people's bank accounts and they try to switch on the TV and figure out what's going on, they can't get access to their broadcasting networks, uh, it creates a certain type of panic in a way uh, and a different type of threat perception from the South Korean public. Now, there's also been a suggestion that if not North Korea, perhaps China could be behind this, given China obviously does have the capability uh, of doing something like this. And the Chinese and the North Koreans are allies to a certain extent. Would you, would you say that that's completely off the table? Well, previous uh, forensic investigations after uh, earlier cyber attacks on South Korea showed that there were IP addresses and servers in China that were used in addition to other countries. So there is that connecting of the dots aspect. But with respect to China and North Korea being allies, that's really in paper only. Uh, they have a very contentious relationship. Uh, but in terms of the capabilities that North Korea has, uh, what they have inside of North Korea is sufficient and the way that they use servers internationally. Uh, enables them to enhance that capability against South Korea. So what are the next steps then for South Korea and the South Korean government here? Uh, this is in the realm of increasing cyber defenses, but this is really a, a different uh, type of initiative. Uh, it's easier said than done. Cyber is uh, a new domain. Uh, people are, and governments are still trying to figure out exactly how to operate in this domain. Uh, so there is a vulnerability that has to be filled. Uh, but it's very interesting in terms of timing right now. There were B-52 U.S. bombers that flew over South Korea in show of support of the South Korean ally. Uh, and clearly there right. was that kind of message sent to North Korea. But it's very, very difficult in the cyber area.